Greetings. It's November 1st. It's All Saints Day. That is certainly one of the classic songs of the Christian tradition and of the Christian faith for all the saints. I play that song because I listen to it quite often. I just like it. And I thought that perhaps when it comes to the time when people uh, dispatch me, that uh, as they go out, I simply want them to do, as many people request, that they uh, play or sing the song for all the saints. As we pointed out in our program on Halloween blessings, and this is certainly part of the Hallowed Eve blessings, is the, that uh, October 31st when Martin Luther uh, nailed it to the wall and started the uh, new idea about how what he believed and uh, what he thought should be done in the world and in our faith and relationship to God. He truly was an entrepreneur, and he went out and did that on Hallowed Eve, because he knew that many people would be coming to uh, the service later in the day, particularly around the midnight hour, and then throughout the day, November 1st, All Saints Day, a very important part of the tradition. What we do on All Saints Day is we give God thanks. We give God thanks for the saints. Now, uh, there are a lot of people who have been declared by uh, the, the Catholic Church in particular that they have been uh, recognized and honored for their special life and their special contribution to the kingdom of God. And uh, after a rather significant vetting process, which of course most of us would never be able to make, they are declared saints with, uh, as someone said, with a smile, with all of the ranks, perks, and privileges thereof. And it also puts them in a special relationship, particularly to how we might approach God ourselves, at least in some people's way of thinking. The saints, and we think of them. And of course, uh, in uh, the National Football League of North America, New Orleans, from the song, When the Saints Go Marching In, kind of a New Orleans jazz song, the uh, football team is simply called the Saints, the New Orleans Saints. And, of course, they uh, don't always, like most athletic players, don't always quite live up to their name. But in particular, there are a few who truly take that uh, saint name rather seriously. And if you're a sports fan, you probably know who I might be talking about. Because that's what it's all about. According to our faith, uh, once we are following the master entrepreneur, Jesus, uh, hey, we are in God's eyes saints. We are his people. And uh, he looks upon us, uh, and he loves us, and he cares for us, and wants the very best for us. And uh, we are entitled to to all the privileges and perks thereof. And that's a lot of what our faith is all about. 
It's not about just kind of escaping to uh, a heaven sometime, somewhere. It is how we can live well with God's creative power now. And that's becoming more and more fundamental to the kind of programs we will do. Uh, What God wants for us is to uh, have us love and live with his creative power. Now that might be a little different definition than you're used to, but can you just think it through? It's where God wants us to love and to live inside of and with God's creative power. It's about living now because uh, the eternity has already been taken care of. And how do we do that? Live with God's creative power. That's the question. And I would particularly like some of you, and we're going to keep it short today because it's very busy and it's a Friday, but I'd like you to think about how can I best live with God's creative power? How can I talk to God? How can I uh, listen to God? How can I be in better relationship and uh, more in touch with God? How can I find his special wisdom? Uh, his uh, direction? How can I be in touch with his power and strength? And uh, how can I uh, follow him, uh, as I say, <laughs> follow him more, 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 more clearly and nearly? How can I love him more dearly? And how can I see him and understand him and experience him more and more? How do we do that? Well, it could be that that's a lot of what all saints are all about. And what I'm simply going to encourage you to do is uh, take it upon yourself to appoint some people as your personal saints. Yes, right. Your personal saints. And who might they be? Think about that, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Stan Houston, by the way. This program is called The Master Entrepreneur, uh, tcenglobal.org slash contribute now. And I'd be grateful right now if you'd kind of honor me and bless me uh, with a uh, contribution or a sponsorship of this program as we are doing many, many things that will require resources above and beyond what we have now in order to serve the world, to serve you as an entrepreneur, and to help people become more and more in tune in their life and in their business with God's creative power. So if you could help me, I'd be grateful. Once again, tcenglobal.org slash contribute now. Let's choose some saints. We'll be right back. Years ago, when I first decided to, uh, as I left some of the formal international missionary work and was seeking God's direction in my life, uh, I put together a little project, an experiment, to try and help people find the way to true success as a beginner, as a business performance coach, and I actually did a little program called Press Toward the Mark. And it was based on uh, St. Paul, entrepreneur, who said, we forget what is behind and we press toward the mark of God's high calling. And the name of the program was, Would You Like to Be One of the 3% Who Are Pressing Toward the Mark? And some ways to actually do that. Become one of the 3% of the population who know who they are. What they truly want out of life. What they truly desire. What their soul's sincere desire is. And then do they have the power and the poise and the purpose and perhaps the uh, people to help them make their mark, uh, to uh, follow God's high calling, because he has one for each and every one of us. And one of the exercises that I found helpful was to name your saint. You see, what I said is, there are all kinds of people in the world that have been, and uh, 
They're now gone. There are people who are here right now who will be gone. But uh, for you, they give you an example of what you would like to be, uh, what you would like to see, what you would like to become. They are people who uh, you admire and respect and uh, I'd like to be like them. And I said, what I'm going to encourage you to do is choose your personal saints. And I said, uh, start with three. See if you can go to seven. But what are the three people? Perhaps people uh, who are now dead. You know, full sainthood. And uh, you may know them. And uh, you may not know them. They may have been famous. They may have been people in the past. Uh, but who are your saints? Now, of course, some of us are actually named after saints. If your name is Mark, if your name is John, if your name is Luke, if your name is Mary, uh, if your name is Catherine, many of you have saints' names. Actually, uh, many of my Polish friends used to like it when they met me because uh, one of the patron saints of Poland was Saint Stanislaus, Saint Stanislaus, and in the community where I live, that was one of the larger churches, and uh, because of that, the Polish kids and my friends didn't call me Stanislaus or Stanley. The nickname for Saint Stanislaus was Stosh. Hi, Stosh. How you doing, Stosh? I really like that name. I actually still like it better, perhaps, than Stan in some cases. How you doing, Stosh? Now, that may be what I mean, but you know, Carl Johansson was a man, a pastor, who led me back into God's kingdom and was an incredible man of God in what he did for me. He's one of my saints. Laverne Berg, a woman uh, long before her time of leadership, Raised a family, six children, incredible intellect. As I often said, if if you would have been born 50 years later, they should have made you a bishop of the church. Uh, Laverne Berg, one of my saints. In many ways, J.C. Penney, manager, Charles Helms, who taught a young boy how to be a little bit more entrepreneurial and introduced him into life and business. Charlie Helms, St. Charlie. I really think so. Now, I could go through many more. But those are just three. And what I encourage you to do today on All Saints Day is to take a little time as you think about your life and your business to uh, perhaps uh, name your saints. Bring them to mind. Think about them. Thank God for them. Really do that today. Thank God for all the saints who have been in your life and in your business and in your human experience that give you encouragement, perhaps a sense of direction, a sense of uh, what you'd like to be more like. Who are your saints? And... uh, Think about them. Write the list down. Keep it in a special place. Thank God for them. And then uh, even ask yourself, I wonder if anyone would ever think of me as a saint. I wonder if anybody would ever think of me as a saint. Would you like that? Well, That means uh, you have some aspirations, perhaps some ambitions, and maybe some things to do. I'm Stan Houston. This is the Master Entrepreneur. You can reach out to be a part of our work and what we do at RadioEdge77 at gmail.com. RadioEdge77 at gmail.com. Because we're going to have many of you, dear saints, on the program as it goes and grows in many ways. All the best and blessings to you. Until next time, bye for now. 